On June 23, 1925, 50 million cubic yards of Sheep Mountain broke free and fell in a half-mile-wide landslide, cutting through the Gravant River and rising 300 feet up on the opposite bank. Without an outlet, the Gravant River began rapidly rising, forming a small lake. Forest ranger Charles Dibble was stationed nearby when the mountain fell and moved his family into Kelly, a town just downriver. Days later, the ranger station was underwater. Miraculously, no one was injured during the landslide. In 1895, William Billy Beerer arrived in Jackson Hole to prospect for gold. Finding little, he turned to homesteading. Beerer spent a lot of time in the mountains behind his homestead, where he often felt tremors in the earth and heard water running under his feet. Worried about a landslide, he sold his homestead in 1920 and died three years later. He never knew his prediction would prove to be accurate. After the slide, Ranger Dibble never trusted the newly formed earthen dam. Water ran through it and he feared the rising waters would overtop the dam. Dibble's reports troubled a number of Kelly residents. For months after the slide, many hauled bedding up to higher ground, fearing the dam might fall in the night. Geologists and engineers from across the country traveled to Jackson Hole to survey the dam. They determined it not only safe, but permanent. The winter of 1926-27 was a harsh one, with unusually high snowfall. The next spring, mountain runoff was equally severe, intensified by heavy rains. Ranger Dibble became increasingly worried about the integrity of the dam. On May 18, 1927, his worst fears were confirmed when the pieces of farming equipment previously floating above the dam appeared downriver. Dibble tried to reach the dam, but was immediately met with a 50-foot wall of water crashing down through the river corridor. Racing into town, he raised the alarm and residents attempted to evacuate. Six individuals lost their lives in Kelly, unable to outrun the powerful surge of water. Those who survived clung to trees awaiting rescue. The residents of nearby Gravant watched the entire episode, helpless. They were the first to arrive on the scene, providing clothing, food, and shelter to the 40-plus families displaced by the flood. Nine hours after the initial onslaught in Kelly, broken parts of homes and farming equipment started passing through the Hoback area, 25 miles away. By 4 p.m. the same afternoon, the Gravant had resumed a normal level and the town of Kelly had been washed away. Only the school and church survived the floodwaters. The residents who remained received federal aid and slowly began to rebuild their community. Today, Lower Slide Lake is five miles long and the tops of trees that were once the valley floor can still be seen poking out above its waters.